All right, guys, so here is the final part of the install. Everything has been installed. There you have the battery pack. Nice and neatly done. There's my dash cam. Welcome back guys to the second part of this Blackview dash cam install on the 997. If you had followed the first video of this series, all I essentially did was I performed an unveil of the product from the box. Uh, it has the B124X battery pack and then it's got the 750 LTE dash cam uh, that has LTE cellular coverage. So for this portion, I am gonna go ahead and go over the installation process of uh, the dash cam into the car. Before I start, I wanted to go ahead and thank Dennis, who runs a channel called The Car Fanatic on YouTube. He's got a phenomenal page that's dedicated to his love for cars. I actually stumbled upon his channel uh, for one, he's a local member here to my Porsche Club. And two, I was looking to figure out how to run wiring through the Porsche. And he was able to show me how to do it and a lot of other YouTubers on how to do um, the removal of some of the A and B pillars of the car. So Dennis, I could not have done this, with pro uh, this project without your video. So double thumbs up to you thank you so much so moving on what we have uh, again we've got the battery pack here for the dash cam we've got the 750 LTE front camera rear camera here and we have essentially all the wiring that goes with the setup now, I have already started to take the 997 apart. What I did was I removed the, the seats. I don't believe you guys have to do it. Uh, actually, let me step back, guys. There's going to be two answers to this dilemma here. If you are just installing the front dash cam on your car, it's going to be a pretty simplified process because you have access to the fuse box which is located um, on US spec cars it's going to be on the driver's side and I apologize I don't know how it is for the rest of the world where it is a right hand drive if it's on the, uh, the, da uh, the I'm sorry the fuse if it's on the left side or the right side but you have access to it you can tap into that and you are pretty much done with the electronic setup now if you are running a battery backup this is where it gets a, a little more complicated and i do recommend you removing the seats so that you can install uh, the battery pack on the passenger side because the driver's side has a bunch of electronics underneath and the battery pack simply will not fit. So you do want to go ahead and remove it. Now, I will warn you guys ahead of time, I strongly suggest that you disconnect the battery once you have determined what fuses you are going to use. Uh, once I get to the wiring part, I will tell you guys what fuse I took. I unfortunately forgot what it is off the top of my head but I have it notated on the electronics portion of this video here so removing the seat is not going to be too difficult you will go ahead and have to remove the A slash B pillars of the car on both sides and then from there you're gonna have to remove the overhead uh, console so that you can drop the headliner down a little bit to run your cabling to the very back of uh, the setup so that you can mount your rear dash cam. So without further ado, my fellow automotive fanatics and Porsche diehards, let's go ahead 
and tackle this project. All right, so we went ahead and took apart uh, the Porsche's interior. Uh, over here, I have the fuse box that I went ahead and opened up already. And I've got the seat removed from the driver's side. This is going to be the passenger side. So here's the first piece that you need to remove to uh, remove your B and A pillar. This is the coat hanger and it essentially just snaps right in. There's one clip here and one clip that just goes right here. So all you want to do is you want to put a prying tool here to pry out. Now I would recommend you guys want to be real careful. I had a plastic trim removal and it still slightly marred just the edge of it. So just be careful. Uh, again, put it in here. This will pop out and then you have your torque bit that you want to go ahead and remove as well. And from there, that allows you access uh, to pull this um, A and B pillar trim completely off. And as you guys can see, the trim pillar here uh, came off. On this side, you've got, these are the clips that actually will hold this trim in. So go ahead and remove that. The next thing that you wanna do is you want to remove the overhead center console. And what you first need to do is you need to remove the garage door switches. And then you want to disconnect the two connectors that uh, connect to the garage door switches. So once you remove that there, there's going to be two bolts that hold this in there. Go ahead and remove those two. And then from there, you're slowly from the back, you're going to unclip it. And as you can tell, here are the two clips that go right here. And then you're able to safely pull this down. Once you have that, you've got two additional clips here that you need to remove. Uh, be careful, this piece right here goes to the mirror and you don't wanna lose it because it, it keeps it nice and uh, held up over here. So again, pull this off. That gives you access to all this over here. Over here, you're gonna go ahead and remove the visors. Uh, you'll first start out by removing this one. It's just essentially a clip that you have to open up and remove the screw that's in here. Same thing, you're gonna pry the initial cover here to pull this off once you unscrew the bolt. Now you'll go ahead and do this for both sides. So we'll go ahead and move over here. you'll go ahead and remove this visor there. That will give you access to start bringing down the headliner. What we're doing here is we are accessing the fuse box as well as removing this component here so that we can actually run the wiring from the fuse box underneath the carpet and actually over to the other side where I plan to put the battery. Now to remove this um, fuse panel panel here, what you'll do is there's one, two, three bolts. You remove those and that essentially comes off very easy. Now for the fuse number tap, it is going to be C, this is gonna be A, B, C. And let's take a look at the one that I ended up removing or tapping into real quick here, guys. The one that I accessed is F6, which is considered the rear window wiper. My vehicle doesn't have that, but it still functions. And uh, the main, important aspects are you want to choose a fuse that is at least 15 amps, which I did. 
that turns on with accessory and turns off when the car is off so that way you're not charging your battery while the car is off otherwise you're going to kill your battery so again it is C and I chose F as in Frank 6 so what we'll go ahead and do is again we'll run the wiring all the way underneath that I've showed you guys how to remove the panel now to remove this component here uh, what you'll need to end up doing is you're going to have to remove two little plugs that go here and then there's one down here as well uh, you'll use a long five allen and you'll stick it in there you'll feel it kind of latch and then you'll turn it now you do not need to undo that bolt uh, you'll just simply loosen it so that way you'll be able to pull this up here with um, kind of like a prying tool which I'm going to grab in just a moment. So to remove this all I essentially did was I didn't grab a prying tool I just used my fingers got underneath it and essentially pop off here just be careful just like that and like most Porsche pieces it looks like there's just going to be these big rivets that go into these holes so um, nothing is broken from here what you can do is you can go ahead and remove this here just set it aside and then you have complete access to run the wires nice and cleanly underneath now what we're doing is we are preparing the rear camera wiring job here and I'm just kinda of panning to show you what we're gonna to try to do um, from here you actually want to loosen the headliner if you take a look real carefully here there is a little metal bar that actually goes right in here and what you do is you'll pull on this little bar this way and it will unlatch from this little clip here and there's one there one here and then there's one over here and what that does is it allows you to drop this headliner down a little bit so that you can run your wiring essentially from here all the way over to the very back now the back it's a little challenging uh, I don't know if you guys can see but here is my long zip tie that I ran through and what you need to do is from on this side uh, you need to put your fingers like this on the outer edge and you're gonna pull down carefully because there are clips that hold that end and from there you can run your zip line all the way over through here and into the headliner just like I did and here is the zip uh, the zip tie that came out on the other side so that is how you are going to run the wiring through your headliner to the very back where the dash cam is going to be mounted here you guys will see that I have ran the zip tie over to the passenger side underneath the carpet and through the liner here now what you'll want to do is you'll want to remove um, there is a little panel for the brake lever you'll remove it and inside there's actually a cutout in the carpet that you'll run the wiring through and underneath you will essentially stick your hand underneath this carpet here and push this out that will give you enough space to run the wiring down here so from here We'll go over to the side here, and I'm essentially going to do the same thing. The opening from here, I will go ahead and run the cabling through and out just like that. Here you guys will notice that I have run the wiring underneath here, and essentially it's going from here on over to here. Let's get a little better light for you guys to see. And essentially what I did was I pulled back the weather stripping and I ran the cabling through underneath here and all the way up through get a little light right through here 
And this metal bar right here, it doesn't look as though there's any type of airbags. It's completely empty. So I ran my power wire up through here. And then what we'll go ahead and do is we're gonna run it through the headliner that I pulled down earlier to the dash cam. So again, down here into the weather stripping area, all the way through here, underneath the carpet, and essentially right through to the other side. So we are done with the Blackview dash cam install on the 997. I wanted to share with you guys some final feedback and some input on the project to help you make sure that you can do this. Uh, in general, the project wasn't too difficult at all, just a little tedious. I do suggest that you guys um, reach out to the YouTuber, the car fanatic, Dennis put together a great video for you to use in conjunction with what I did to have access to uh, the top of the headliner. It's going to help you run your wiring from the very front to the very back. Now, the route that I took where I ran the cabling from the driver's side over to the passenger side where I put my backup battery, that proved to be a little of a challenge. Now, the 997's um, carpet underneath has some rubber. And as you know, anything that runs across rubber is going to grab. So that was the difficulty that I was having. When I was running my, um, my large zip tie through and underneath, it was essentially catching the rubber part and I wasn't able to pull it through easily as some of the other uh, floorboards that I have worked with before. Now that the dash cam has been installed complete, I have reviewed the front and the back, adjusted the angles, and it looks fantastic. I love how it functions. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to do a full-blown review of the, um, the camera in itself, but I will kind of highlight the things that I really like about it. Again, this specific dash cam, the 750 from Blackview, it is a dual channel 1080p and uh, the video footage is superb on the dash cams. That's one thing I really like about it. The other thing is because it has LTE access, I'm able to view my car when I'm at work, uh, when I'm at shopping or doing whatever away from the car that's the beauty of it and because it has notification ability if someone strikes my car or something happens to it that I have preset it to notify me it would do just that so I can review it and see hey my car got hit or something um, uh, damaged a car or someone tried to break into the car so that's definitely a nice feature Another feature I really like about the dash cam is because it is a cellular setup, I can use the dash cam as a hotspot. So let's say my wife is with me in the car, she's got her iPad, uh, she is able to actually Wi-Fi into the dash cam and use it as a hotspot. So that is a great feature that you can use for the dash cam. The last thing that I really like about my setup is I have Blackview's 124X uh, battery backup where I can run a consistent non-stop recording of the dash cam while the vehicle is off. So again, if you're out at dinner, 
um, or an extended time frame, you can have that battery constantly running your dash cam so that you have continuous recording. Unlike other uh, setups where you're actually tapping into your battery system, the fear that I've always had with that is that you're going to end up coming back to your car, your dash cam has eaten up some of that battery, and you're not going to be able to start your car. So that's a feature that I really like about the dash cam's battery backup is it doesn't touch the car setup at all. So hopefully I have given you guys enough information as well as my experiences here to help you install your specific dash cam in the Porsche 997. Until the very next time, my friends, this is Peter, your automotive fanatic, signing off.